Did you hear any of that lecture there, Sandra? I certainly did, brother. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ooh, can he stay on and we can have a conversation? Because yes, let's have a conversation because I, I, I always, I, I mean, I don't know you very well, but the times I've interacted with you, there's, you have, there's a vitality and even more so now than when I saw you last time, you're, mm-hmm. you're tapping into something. And, you know, I know you teach Ascension, but I've never really heard because I'm sure you've had, you don't just teach something because it's interesting. It's something's happened to you, Sandra. I want to know what it is, if you don't mind. <laughs> uh, precisely. Yeah. You, we don't teach anything that we, we can't comprehend or experience yeah. ourselves. You know, that's the way to stay in integrity and purity with this whole thing. But I have to say just this year, there has been an unshakable, deep, true uh, heart connection with source or the I am presence that even myself, somebody who has experienced multiple levels of activation throughout this process, this is just unprecedented. And the thing about um, having a, a unified collective, you know, I have people that I work with and guide and students and everything. But when we start having collective activations, same day, same moment, that that kind of thing, we can see how unity consciousness itself is really stepping forward into providing uh, more unified experiences. But the kind of purity, the new harmonic frequencies that are getting through because of the diminishment of the magnetosphere. And when we have geomagnetic storms, which no coincidence, we are in one in this now moment, this day, um, the, the veils, which are the magnetic fields, allow now new frequencies and new levels of information. And when that information comes into a prepared bio landscape or a prepared consciousness that's ready to interpret those frequencies on behalf of the collective, beautiful things start to occur. And I love that now that we're able to hold that frequency on behalf of any willing heart that wants to step into that experience, it kind of auto corrects the realities around you. So you start getting a different experience. Yes, we're using different parts of the heart crystalline stargate function, definitely different fields and um, and codes within the golden race DNA. But the most interesting thing to me is the experience itself. It's really washing away the past, washing away narratives that are just not applicable to that that level of consciousness. And the beautiful thing with having contact, if you want to call it that, or being a conduit for star family information or higher realm information, is that you start experiencing realities or levels of consciousness or experiences here in the way that our star families always have. So for me, somebody who's had contact since I was a child, It was always fascinating to me, their perspective, right? That cosmic perspective that was unified and calm and wasn't concerned about drama and ill trajectories or anything like that. They were like, put your focus here, right? Put your focus here on the ascension. And that now is is unveiling just different ways of walking in these worlds, different ways of changing collective realities and it really dissolves um all the flotsam of the old paradigm very quickly but you know i see when i see you and i have i think i've seen you in person yes that you're thinking you have an illumination something's happened to you mm-hmm. which is an accelerate can you talk about that a little bit personal if you don't mind sharing because i see it yeah. in you I see the energy, even on video here, something's going on there with you. 
And it, you know, it sounds wonderful and it's lovely that you can witness that, but I have to say it's not a, it doesn't feel like a personal thing, Mm. right? It feels like the source is starting to create a different experience right through all these crystalline or Christed conduits. And the, the path of the ascension that was laid out uh, for, for me to interpret and facilitate here always included this, this Christed crystalline unity crystal, you know, it all means the same thing, but it included this frequency of consciousness that would unify the, the lower self, if you want to call it that with infinite creator, with other aspects. So suddenly you don't get the experience of separation, but another focus of the ascension process was the biophotonic metamorphosis that we're all going through where it's like, look, in order for a divine human to express on this ascended planetary consciousness that already exists, right? We're just migrating realities to that already ascended planet in the perspective of of what I've received. So that already ascended planetary consciousness is a platform for beings that can exist in the old form. So all this emphasis on crystalline DNA and getting into the Christed state and activating that crystalline stardust within was purposeful. So you're literally going to express as a light being. And even though it seems like, you know, 20 years ago, when I, 1999, when I first started receiving information about that, it seemed far-fetched. It was very hopeful. It was like, I don't know. And you follow and you walk the path. And the next thing you know, you've got sparkling skin, like literally, you know, there's like crystalline people call it God's glitter, you know, but literally you can see the crystalline particles and the crystalline structures that we've been calling forth for all these years, suddenly becoming very physical. And then they become receiver generators of this new level of consciousness, but it's also light based, right? It's a very light based technology, a light intelligence is coming into form. So to be able to witness it in my own journey is remarkable. But I have to say that um, the connection with star beings, since we're talking about star beings through this whole thing, um, becomes quite seamless. It, uh, it takes away all of the sensationalism that was around uh, contact and and uh, extraterrestrials, if you want to call them that, of the early days. You know, you're just watching those stories kind of fade. You're like, yeah, that's was the old trajectory. That's interesting, right? So the parameters for our reality suddenly widen. You start getting a cosmic perspective, and that cosmic perspective does not include focusing on. Uh, drama or what went wrong. It's very much put your focus on creating the new. You have to learn how to be a creator being again within the parameters that Gaia is providing for that 5D, 9D, 12D, you know, ascended new earth realms. Does that make sense? It totally makes sense to me because I feel the reason we've incarnated is to be creator beings, to Mm. emulate creation and it's not about the old dramas. When you are creators, you're, you're making known the unknown, which is one of the teachers I had said, mm-hmm. we're here to make known the unknown. That's not to recycle the ignorance and the dramas of the past, but to bring new experience to human civilization um, in the form of art, creativity. I mean, that's my understanding as mm-hmm. sharing your experiences or being a great teacher or a mother or whatever it is that activates your creative potential is adding to creation as creators. And what I see in you or I feel, and if you don't mind talking, that there's a quickening that's happening vibrationally as the biophotonic natures of the cells start to ignite. Can you talk about, not personally in a sense, but what's the quickening? What's the feeling? I want to understand what you're feeling. Yeah. yeah. And the feeling, wow. I mean, some days it's the, it's a trance like blank mm. stare, right? Sometimes it's so much information, but it can't be interpreted with the mind. They always say, don't go to the mind, 
go to the heart, right? Because the heart is getting activated in, in a very different way. And all of the gatekeeping that I've done, you know, I've done extensive work with, with the organ restoration of the organic stargate system. And they were like, well, of course, you know, this organic stargate system that exists within the spark of the creator that's within us is going to start being able to receive different frequencies, different information. And sometimes it feels overwhelming. And sometimes it feels, and not overwhelming in a dramatic sense. I'm not pacing the floor and weeping. You know, it's not like that. It's a very, it's a very still kind of zero point calmness that, that again, you know, the, we were talking yesterday about um, the inability to create distortion. Like suddenly that level of the DNA starts kicking on and it just, you're, it doesn't even cross your mind or your heart to create just dis personal distortion, any kind of conflict, you know, it's just not interesting. It's right. just, you know, it just, you lose your fascination with duality completely. It's beautiful, right? Well, isn't it because, this is just my opinion, the personality starts to drop away. So there's no personal thing. And I, and let me ask you, Sandra Walter, the personality, <laughs> which is lovely, a very nice person, but that is a fractal of the greater being you're becoming. You, you are, we think we are connected to archetypes, but we actually are a fractal of these, I wouldn't even call them archetypes, but these greater consciousness beings, we appear to be these individuals, but who we really are is an emanation of those divine aspects. Does Correct. Correct. And I feel like the um, positive dissociation that happens when you get into this uh, loss of identity crisis, if you want to call it that, um, it's just suddenly, oh, you know, it's just the facade drops. You're not capable of holding personality constructs in the same way anymore. And for for me, you know, we're walking people through this with, uh, you know, with a lot of the teachings right now, because it does, it kind of shocks people. They're like, well, because the, the mind still wants to go to the old neural pathway of who am I and what am I doing here, right? And when you kind of let go of that, of course, you're going to use a, a placeholder, Sandra Walter, you know, and it just even speaking that that word just feels so foreign, you know, as we go through this, you're like, what? You know, even connecting with you, brother, I don't think we've ever met in person, but we've been talking for a long time, you know? I mean, that's, it's just that kind of thing where you're like, of course, Alan, right? You know, quote unquote. Um, but that it's just, again, you get into that creator state of consciousness and you really get the most beautiful thing for me is the sense, the direct sense of source having an experience of multiverse, of universe, of a planetary consciousness going through ascension, of a body going through ascension. And when, and rather than a personal perspective on, oh my gosh, this is happening to me. And what about, you know, my body is going through all these changes, everything. It just kind of, you consistently get pulled up into this cosmic perspective of enjoying, right? Everything that's happening, not attached to the drama, but enjoying that. And a lot of a lot of reminders from the higher realms. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about this. It's all getting taken care of. Just, you know, just follow this sensation. And the sensation, especially when you're an active participant, and I do feel you have to be an active participant in the ascension process, or you don't get the gold, right? Have <laughs> a good experience of, wow, this is really um, unfathomable to the person I was 10 years ago or whatever. You know, it's just the the expansion just kind of continues to snowball into something greater and you lose your attachment to, wow, what am I going to be in five years, 10 years? It just doesn't matter anymore. I think that's an important word to, to use. It doesn't matter anymore. You're not creating 
uh, in the dense brick and mortar structures that you used to engage with. But this sense of connection to source, I am presence, it just kind of sweeps all the personal stuff out of the way. That said, embracing creativity at all costs <laughs> is uh, definitely part of our journey here that's been re-emphasized. You know, I wrote a book back in 2004 called The Creator State, you know, just talking about artists, creative people who would then create at the same time and create shifts in reality. And here we are all these years later actually doing this, right? Because every time we engage with infinite possibility and just let the heart and the creativity expand a little bit more, even if you don't have the tools to create what it is that you envision or feel, just following that impulse from the heart, from the creator itself, creates more infinite possibilities, not just for your personal experience, but for all of us who are facilitating this ascension right now. I think all of we're all creators because we've incarnated to be creators, to emulate the creator or creation. That is our mission. And it's mm -hmm. innate in all of us until it's been programmed and conditioned and, you know, beaten out of you to be that. And then you kind of narrow the focus. But the creative aspect of being is the wave of ascension that we're coming into. I feel the that movement is to kind of be at the edge of each moment with, with no anticipation, but open. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's how I see it. it's like surfing. You're at the edge of the board, surfing into the next moment, the next moment that has no prerequisite to the past. Does that make sense? Yeah, correct. And there's been experiences like, for um, the gr the groups that that I've created and that, and when we play with even in like crystalline convergence, um, the last couple of years a significant jump in our ability to hold zero point, to get everyone into that state, and then use that fertile soil to plant our intentions. And then I noticed, um, just this year, in uh, back in May, we got to a state where we were in such complete silence, complete harmony. We do toning and invocations to get us there. But once we had reached that and we have singing bowls playing, we're all toning, you know, getting into a pure and pure and pure, and pure state of zero point together. And then the entire event ended in silence, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to leave that field. And then we noticed that because collectively, right, we're doing things with our DNA, we're doing things with our consciousness, all of our trajectories changed, mm -hmm. right? All of our, everyone was just in calmer states, more peaceful with their own journey. And if that's something that we can then disseminate out into the collective, just by a few of us getting together and doing that, that to me is very exciting because it'll provide stability through the more intense uh, ascension frequencies and and narrative shifts and changes in trajectory that we have coming over the next couple of years are unprecedented. I know that word's used a lot, but it's it's yes. true. It's it's true. You know, it's that's an accurate description of what's coming. Well, it's true because there's the density that of the old grid that's still holding on to some of the DNA, and I think it has to be shaken mm -hmm. loose. Mm -hmm. And the you know that process is about shaking it loose. The the past, the 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 grid of limitation, whatever you want to call that, until mm -hmm. we get to where you're leading people into a field of of harmony and resonance that's at, at a maybe fifth dimension, whatever you want to call that ascension level. Mm. But we, and you're doing the work on yourself. I can feel it. So you're resonating the field mm. that people can then step into as well. So that's why I totally appreciate what you're doing. I did see the end of one of your conferences. I 
saw you at the Creative Life Center and I felt the energy of that field. So um, yeah, and then more is coming to you. It's like, you're just, you're just opening up to those. I mean, not just, but I feel there's so much more coming mm -hmm. in it's, as you know, you call this placeholder. That's a great way to put it. The placeholder starts to dissolve and yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and you know, my, my motto was always let us show humanity what is possible with Ascension because mm -hmm. When um, when a soul is experiencing the kind of dreamlike density, um, it needs to, you know, a lot of people need to be shown what's possible in order for them to go, oh, okay, now it's safe to go in that direction. So I feel like the all the collectives that are working on demonstrating what's possible with not just human consciousness, but what's possible with um the, the form being able to carry more source, more creator state of consciousness, the Christed state, that unity, trinitized beingness, um, the more people will trust it, right? And it, but it does have to be a personal experience at first, right? Yeah, it all comes with choice. I think for you and what you're teaching, it's not just trusting, it is that, but you're emanating it, you're mm -hmm. actually transmitting it as you know, because you're holding the space and, and you're creating the field as you walk into the field, you, if you're willing to be there, you let go in and it initiates that acceleration. That's what I'm feeling mm -hmm. as you emit the ascension possibilities. Um, have you heard of the term, the assemblage point at all? Do you know what that means? Yes, I have. Right. So I think that's one way that the Toltecs use to turn their body into light, you mm. know, to what they call burn right. from a fire from within. Right. Focus on that. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the assemblage point assembles realities and it feels like you are elevating people to these other realities that you're. Well, that that's the beauty of contact or being a conduit is we've been talking about this for a long, long time. Right. And it has been demonstrated on this planet before kind of a one off mastery or star beings coming in and going, this is what you can do. And then they depart. Right. And there's all the stories and they get distorted. <laughs> so now that it's a collective thing instead of kind of a one off mastery kind of situation, um, there's there's definitely um, a washing away of the barriers between. Uh, our ourselves as if you want to call us a human race you know mm -hmm. there's definitely the creation of something new going on with the divine human genome which a lot of star races seem to be interested in but i feel the the more like my relationship with star beings or higher levels or ancients of days or like my source spark coming through like paradise suns which is a star consciousness um there's there's such an intimacy and this is something that if i could just wave a wand and grant everyone access um i would certainly do so but there's an intimacy with higher levels of consciousness even beyond form like paradise sun just beyond form um that is so beautiful and so gracious and provides a stability for for walking in these realms and walking through all of these energies that is so precious to me and and something that feels like if there's anything sacred that that would be it besides source itself is that intimacy that you start feeling with other forms of consciousness other realms of consciousness that then rather than it being kind of the uh old-fashioned way of uh, here's a message from so and so here's a message from so and so like all of that just uh, that dissolved very quickly for me i was like i don't want to be that kind that of channel channel Period. Period. Like I'm not talking to you. No, <laughs> you know? no I, I, I know. Like, you, that's very mundane. That's very 
what you're bringing it's in served, right? It's served. I don't want to criticize it at all. It's no judgment. It's just it's served for a while, and now we are we are open to levels of consciousness that kind of want nothing to do with. I'm going to give you a message about what's going to happen next January. You know, it's just you know, it's it's, it's so seamless. I know it's so old, and I mean because it's not about the personal anymore, and and yet. I love what you said. It's intimate. It's intimate without the personal me, my, my history, all that. It's, it's intimate in a way that's beyond mm -hmm. our own personal self of ego. Maybe I'll say it that way. Or even the collective ego of thinking of us is like, oh, this planet is so important. And the human race is so important. It's like, okay, ch -ch 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 -ch. what's really going on here? right? This is source having an, a beautiful dream, a beautiful experience. And if you can kind of resonate with that, even for short periods of time, you start getting a different perspective on this entire thing. And then it does, it becomes quite beautiful, even the distortion and the dismantling of distortion is beautiful. It's not something to like push for, fight for. You're like, mm, the vibration will handle it. If you put your focus on amplifying that higher vibration, it's a natural effect of the quant of quantum physics. The higher vibration shakes apart the lower vibration and it either dissolves or it gets absorbed, pulled up into the higher thing. And if you can just put your perspective there and then treat your personal journey that way, you then start becoming part of this larger consciousness that's having this overhauling of the realities right changing the entire paradigm of a universe of a multiverse you know we're we're very aware that things are happening across all realms all parallel realities seen and unseen there is not one fractal untouched by what is happening right now within source itself, right? Within the multiverse itself. And yes, we kind of focus on our own little neighborhood, right? Because it's a corporeal experience until it isn't anymore, right? It's a, it, you know, feels very physical. And then as it becomes much more non-physical, uh, you, it, it's beautiful that we've had so much contact because we have examples of like, how can my star family, you know, fade in and out of my reality and walk through my tent and land or, or whatever it is that's going on? Um, and I've always been curious about how um, they, other aspects of self, if you want to call it that, um, were able to do all the beautiful things that that they can do. And even like last night, like we're in the ultimate star beings conference, right? My bedroom's full of beings. And I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, but it's become so second nature to me. You know, it doesn't even phase me anymore, but, um, but it's beautiful to have that experience of uh, an intimacy with all these different levels of consciousness that then assist us because we're assisting ourselves, right? assist us with yes and a little bit wider, a little bit more perspective, a little bit less density, a little bit less duality, stay on the path and beautiful things will unfold. And I feel like um, the, the experience, because it's been anchored by so many people this year, of that direct connection with that calm, beautiful presence um, and a, a level of hard coherence and and uh, crystalline light body coming online that provides a, a different experience. I know it's going to be widespread, right? It's always domino. But I also do think there's a physicality to it, at least in my experience, from, from the tips of your toes to your finger, to all of it, it's, it's a vibrational that is passing through the incarnation, the body mm -hmm. with an awareness of its acceleration oh, and yeah. that that's that's sort of exciting that's like the ignition igniting the, the you know the the light body because it's really mm -hmm. light that's being ignited and as the physical starts to transform you talked about the glittering skin and the glow and mm -hmm. and that's and i think it feels good you know i think that's <laughs> 
<laughs> it does feel good. But I feel like, you know, if if you want to put a label on us and call us star seeds or, you know, just the the people who are here to facilitate, yeah. right? The, the simply here to facilitate, right? You gamble, you hope you can wake up in time and, and do your duty properly and everything. But a lot of our purpose is to parent the body through this process. So the body is a separate consciousness, right? The body belongs to Gaia, right? That's the old clay story. Yes, the body belongs to Gaia. So you're renting a body vehicle uh, for your consciousness to play in these realms, and it's lovely. But part of uh, the calling to come here um, or part of the ascension process itself is to assist the body consciousness that's having its own experience to start reflecting that higher level of consciousness. And I find the more that we can parent our bodies through this process, you know, the body is completely capable of transforming, right? We've seen many examples of that, but as we do this as a collective, that's the part that um, you really get kind of that higher perspective on, you know, kind of seeing from the oversoul or the, or the unified level is, ah, okay, this is going to be a little bit challenging sometimes, but the more higher consciousness you can get flowing through that crystalline stardust, right? Your own little universe. um, The more of that higher energy you can get flowing through that, the easier it is for the body to keep up with the constant light intelligence that is coming through, telling it to do something else, right? That, well, go ahead. Well, no, I, I'm going to repeat. I said this to you a couple of years ago when we first met. Um, you might remember it, but it did seem to like spark something because when I was doing a rebirthing session, out I was outside somewhere and I got in touch with the earth intelligence, the intelligence mm-hmm. of the earth. And the earth said, It would gladly take back this human body from where it emerged. But its greatest aspiration as the earth is to become a star. Yes. That's igniting the earth body into star beingness as as light emanations. So the earth, I think, I don't know, wants is not maybe not the right word, but the earth's mm, evolution is to become the star, the star being. And that's us in these earth bodies, transmuting it into star beings. Yes. So if you look at that trajectory of Gaia becoming a spiritual sun, right? right? Not an actual star, a spiritual sun. She becomes more solar, probably down the trajectory. She she will go completely solar. But you can see like her, you know, also as a representation of cosmic divine mother and all of that energy, like kind of parenting her children through a transformation, I'm going to become a star. So all of you need to become solar crystalline beings, period, right? That's the only way you're going to be able to exist in my realms, right? So we're we're living inside the earth. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So I love the, the trajectory is, is amazing. It's wonderful for what's happening here. And especially as a, you know, as somebody who interacts with stargates to get all those organic stargate flows reactivated again. So all the master crystals can do their, their job and the crystalline structures within Gaia herself can start going more solar. You know, it's all that, that solar energy, that star energy coming back, but rather than completely blowing the circuits of the (laughs) topsiders, <laughs> right? The people on the surface, you know, I'm not, not going to speak for inner earth at all, right. but uh, for the topsiders, um, those frequencies at, uh, not just coming in, but emanating from a planetary consciousness that's turning into a star, right? Has to be transformed. And in a relatively tight window, I have mm. to say, you know, it goes very quickly. Like everyone is very aware of the acceleration of time and now loss of time constructs are completely breaking down for a lot of people, right? It takes so much focus to show up at a certain time in a certain window, right? It's just, oh, you know, it's 
that causes me anxiety sometimes, you know, because it just, the, the, the loss of time constructs is a very real thing to me. So I'm, you know, when you're in bindi state or flow state, most of your day, you're like, oh, you have to remind yourself to kind of plug into, <laughs> you know, linear constructs. But you could see like Gaia's trajectory is Christos Sophia doing this beautiful transformation and it's and it's a done deal now right that is the trajectory there are no other secondary timelines or anything that are going to um prohibit that at all anymore so that's kind of a, a weight off for a, a lot of gatekeeper light worker grid worker types were like mm, this is a done deal okay now it's migrating these realities to something brand new and this the but the transformation of the body can, can only be done through the em, embracing that higher state of consciousness right that's kind of like the pass key right it's the only the only way it works is to get into unity consciousness which is the highest level of technology i've ever, ever been exposed to well then how do you can you give us some tips of how we you do that we do that um because I think there is a practice to it. It's not, it, it mm. just doesn't happen if you're out at the ball game drinking beer or whatever. <laughs> well, I don't know. For some, for some people, they might find so much joy in that, that it would just be wonderful. Oh, there's a snowstorm in Sedona right now. I'm so excited. Um, it just lights me up. I love the snow. The process, uh, you know, the ascension process, while it is unique to, the, the individual uh, expression of that path, there is a path laid out for an ascension process as we know it in this now, and it continues to accelerate. So a path that used to take 20 years can now take 10, and I'm sure in a couple more years, it'll only take you know moments to, mm -hmm. to go through the purging of old consciousness and the embracement of the new. But when it comes to interpreting the frequencies now, it all begins with choice. So until you sit down and make that actual choice, this is the incarnation where I choose to have this experience and I'm going to go for it and I'm going to do everything within my life stream to embrace a higher state of being and to transform everything that I'm doing and not uh, you know, you start with a personal choice, but it really has more to do with service than anything else, right? If you're actually going to be in service to the whole, uh, that adds a whole nother layer to your journey. But then you start with, you know, the basics, the groundwork, the platform for you to stand on has to be built on unconditional love, or the structure will fall crumble apart and you'll have dark night of the soul and all the other things that that come with that there's definitely a little bit of shadow work that comes with any part of the process now it's not decades or lifetimes anymore you fly through it very quickly and there's definitely a bazillion different ways to get through those levels of consciousness but the consistency of decreeing your reality meditating movement dealing with things moment by moment as they arise. And then the more advanced you become, the more skilled you become at qualifying all of the light emanations that come from you, from your own consciousness, and really learning how to become a crystalline conduit, that's definitely part of it. And there's, there's something that happens when you're very conscious about qualifying your light em emanations that means no more distortion, right? You catch yourself, call that energy back, requalify it, and go in the proper direction. And the more that you train that muscle and you train the heart to start creating those fields, there's definitely a, a level or a field of the DNA that clicks on and suddenly you're like, oh my gosh, hands off the wheel, right? All of a sudden the Christed state takes command of the journey, which is something we've been invoking for all this all this time, right? Higher levels take command. Body vehicles show me over and over again. And in the beginning, it's several times a day, and then it's once a day, and then all of a sudden you're on autopilot because you've built 
completely new pathways for the consciousness to give you a different experience. So right now, with all of the bombardment that's hitting the nervous system, and if we remember the nervous system is responsible for crystalline light body, it's re responsible for receiving light codes, if you want to call them that, new frequencies, it all lands on the nervous system. And there's been a lot of uh, warning over the last 10 years about uh, concerns about psychological fallout from the shift in consciousness, because it is a lot of energy that, you know, the nervous system is just the delivery system for that. So when people start getting stimulated and they haven't established a way to qualify their own light or to remain calm or to move when the energy is starting to pool or, or overstimulate different parts of the body, um, there's going to be confusion, right? And because they're not operating from the heart, the mind starts to get a, a little overstimulated. So a reminder to everyone, balance, harmony, right? Continue to attempt to access the zero point as much as possible, that still point that that does provide that direct connection to source, to your higher levels, to our star family, and consistently learn how to qualify your own light emanations because that's the frequency that aligns with and matches where we're going. So we don't want to like stay in the same place, right? If you've had the same practices and the same level of consciousness for a while, it's time to level up, right? You got to like, just embrace that higher path and just try something new. And of course, Gaia is going to provide a lot of what you need, right? It's a lot of solar Gaia connection uh, coming into play with us literally mutating, uh, becoming the anomaly in the collective DNA pool, right? That then emanates new frequencies, new possibilities. Yeah and turning other people on. I think you're also referencing the Kundalini awakening that is happening at some point where people are suddenly getting this rush of energy up the spine, this activation, yeah. and we they have to be prepared to know in some sense what to do with it or to allow it instead of shutting it down. Mm -hmm. And because it's, it's the God Christed consciousness that's infusing the body with awakening and mm -hmm probably see more and more of that happening. Yeah. And to really embrace those mastery qualities, there is something, I had a huge emphasis on divine neutrality a couple of years ago. Now we can see why, of course, but that true non-judgmental state that can't be swayed between this choice and that choice any longer, right? You just embrace infinite possibility and you're not pulled that level of discernment is is so key to the experiences of uh, say like a kundalini rising or an activation or suddenly uh, a, a higher level of your own consciousness wants to deliver information to you or whatever you know discernment is key but divine neutrality teaches us how to just av avoid the whole fear construct completely. And rather than deciding if something is good or bad or scary to your personal consciousness or not, you know, it really allows you to kind of step back, get some cosmic perspective and be more of in the witness state of, of what's going on. That has really been a strong part of my journey to maintain stability not just as a as a conduit but just as a person walking through this incredible process you know there's been yeah it started with a lot of discernment right and i was always told don't listen to narratives right because right. people people have a lot of stories about what has and hasn't happened on the planet and it is what it is and it was a beautiful part of our journey but now that we're coming into higher states of consciousness it just kind of washes it away right yeah and there's a new story it's not but it's not a story you know I, the neutrality of even watching your own story as it comes up and dissolves it's all that neutrality of watching of witnessing of 
observing. And if we can do that long enough, the next story, that's not a story, but it's the next wave of different types of experiences start to come through that are not of the me, my personal, but it, it also is intimate. You know, it's, it's that new way of being and what I'm sensing in my own, some of my own experiences, it's, it's, it's something new. The new humanity is arising Mm -hmm. and it doesn't look like anything like the old humanity, I think. Correct. And that, that emergence, that presence is so uh, strong, unique, and radically different from anything we've experienced prior to that. You know, we always heard the all this and more story. Um, And here we are in the and more, right? We're starting to become conduits of a brand new experience. And I feel that just to kind of loop it back to uh, star beings and that presence, you know, anyone who's had let's say uh, an authentic contact with a benevolent either higher aspect of self or another star race, if you want to call that that, even the the term race is just kind of like, woo, just kind of drifting out of my reality right now. I'm like, wow, that isn't what that is at all. You know, it's just different perspectives, right? But to be to be in um, in their presence, you know, there's a lot of uh, say mastery type consciousness or star being uh, consciousness that would show up in your reality vision, right? And there would be just the frequency of that presence would deliver everything that you needed when you when you needed it, right? It just showed up. Right. And a lot of it, I'm I'm finding a lot of uh, the communication um, kind of straying away from words, which is beautiful. Right. Because there's a lot more information when you go nonverbal um, that that's beautiful. Right. But that training. Right. Of being in the in the presence of star beings or star consciousness that don't talk or an ancient of days kind of guardian, huge, you know, consciousness that does not communicate in a, in a linear way. I'm starting to feel like that vibrational match with my own consciousness and that level of consciousness getting stronger. Like you could touch it before. Is you that, that is this, this little placeholder of our personality is, it's not us. It's those star. It's those greater beings that we're actually. I feel this little piece is like a branch of the tree. That's the tree, so, mm-hmm. and we're like little shoots. We think we're the tree, but we're really just the branch until you become the tree. You know, it's like, and that's the divine emanations that are mm-hmm. saying to the rest of its being, "It's we're all of you. We're all of us." Yeah. That's, what I'm yeah. getting, I'm getting that from the star being I'm talking to right now, mm-hmm. which is you, Sandra. Which is just... Well, it's unity consciousness was the mission, right? Mm-hmm. It was like let's just bring all the fractals back into unity, mm-hmm. so that we can transform these realities and provide a new experience. And to be able to do that in a as a, an awakened consciousness and in, in form is quite incredible i mean it's the most fascinating thing you know when early on in the journey when you're deciding what do i really want out of this incarnation right which is the primary mastery uh qualification of your entire journey you will get asked that what do you want what would you like to experience and when you make a choice and you can continue to up level that as you go along of course but when you're kind of looking at your incarnation, you know, for me, it came after near-death experiences, just experiences of higher levels of consciousness. And you come back into your form, like, what do I want to do with this journey? Obviously, there's a lot more going on here than, uh, than previously thought. And when you make your entire journey, you're like, what's the coolest thing that's, that's happening right now in these realms, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to worry about what's happening in other star systems. I'm not going to, you know, it's care, but don't carry. I always say, you know, it's like, I care about what's happening in other sectors of the universe or 
or fractals of source, but I'm not going to carry their journey. Where Let me put my focus here. What's the most exciting, interesting thing that I could experience? And when you're provided with like the banquet of infinite possibility that can happen right through this body, living in a body on a planet, um, mm-hmm. that is, is a heart opener in itself right and then it gets into Absolutely. it's what jesus said i mean jesus as a teacher said give no thought for tomorrow tomorrow will take care of itself right it does it and- does you know and you start to see the blend of moments that create you know different realities and everything it's just a beautiful structure i have an infinite respect for what's going on here you know mm. uh, regardless of you know distortion or alignment or whatever it's just a deep appreciation again from that higher perspective of everything that's unfolding right here and if you can stay in that state of gratitude uh for mm. for everything that's presenting personal as well as collective um you change you change the collective trajectory by embracing that that state of beingness right can be so simple. Let's embrace it. Let's just, can we just, can we just emanate our star beingness? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, what do we have? We have a few minutes here. Yeah. Why don't we do that? Let's tap into that. So everyone feel just take the elevator out of the mind, just lower it into the heart and let those doors open, right? Let that stargate open the heart. And just for a moment, just breathe there. Because that's all there is. There's just source and the fractal of sorts that's providing this experience. So you can just tap into that zero point, right? That stillness. Take a breath. Just exhale. Let everything else go. All the agendas and the plans and what you're going to do next moment just let it go and let it kind of collapse into zero point and even though that stillness for some people can feel like a void or empty take a breath in there and just feel the presence of the infinite creator one unified consciousness one unified beingness, having all these different experiences, and just sit for a moment in that level of consciousness, peace, calm, infinite creation. I just let everything go. And you can start to feel what we call the infinite Christ field starting to emanate just by your choice to tap into the source within. And in that stillness, you might feel the spark, the crystalline, maybe a golden ray starting to come forth. As in order to create our experience, we go a little bit solar and a little bit crystalline and start fractalizing out from the core, from the oneness, into all of this myriad of experiences. So hold your consciousness at zero point, feeling the oneness, and then simultaneously embrace your multidimensionality and start to feel all of creation. That state of unity consciousness, feeling all of the fractals, expressing as stars, universes, unknown realms, planetary consciousness, a soul inhabiting a body on an ascending planet, turning into a solar star-like emanation. Feel it all at once. All that is. 
Now, I want you to feel the field that holds that all together. The unified field of divine love light intelligence. That's the glue that holds all of this source creation together, which is why we say source is unconditional love. Source is infinite love, infinite light. Feel the presence of that frequency that holds everything together. And now in your own fractal of experience, right through the heart, start to feel all of that infinite creation emanating through your heart center. Infinite light, infinite love, infinite crystalline consciousness before it has a chance to personalize the experience. Feel the heart as the true crystalline stargate to all that is. Just take a breath there. Beautiful. Now our challenge in this now moment is to open your eyes, come into awareness of these realities and hold that open crystalline stargate of the heart of pure source emanation in these realms across all the different realities, all the different experiences. They are what they are. It is what it is. But we're holding that open door to source in these realms so that source infinite creator, the love light intelligence can start creating a new experience. Let the light do the work. Let the love hold the door open and become the presence in these realms. Just come, just come back into waking consciousness. You can kind of feel the feel kind of active with that frequency. And for those of you with open hearts, you're going to feel like this to kind of blows, blows back the consciousness sometimes becomes very palpable, right? You can Mm -hmm. kind of feel the field and work with it and walk around with that emanation. And you're going to notice little miracles, synchronicities, you know, all these things start to autocorrect around you simply because you're holding that frequency. And that is where the ascension is at in this now. Mm, Beautiful. You know, I felt my ego personality starting to slip away Mm. in that, to to dissolve the me, the, the story. And part of me wanted to run after and say no don't go but the other Mm -hmm. part just let it go and just I mean became nothing and it's nothing in the sense of story Mm -hmm. and and that's a new experience when we can be trusting that right trust source all of us need to learn how to trust God again right so here we are when you trust that emanation and you allow it to just show me a little bit more a little bit more, a little bit more light, you'll find the natural progression of the ascension is just glorious. But the first part for me is becoming nothing in the sense of, Mm -hmm. and then trusting, like you say, that there's something that's beyond that. Yeah, And that's the process I'm in, or Mm -hmm. was until this moment. So nothing, meaning that all the illusions of the mind, the personality, the story, the history. It's, it doesn't have to, it, it's got, I mean, it's there if I want to bring it back, but yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a, um, uh, 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 um, a concretization that happens when you are holding that. And when that's let, when you let go of that, then it's just something new is possible something new as possible. Right, right. Beautiful, brother. Oh, it's been lovely connecting with oh, you. I know we have to roll. Great. I'll give it you as a donor. We'll, we'll, we'll have tea and maybe do an interview there. Yeah, would love it.
Beautiful. Is there a reason, is Sedona an acceleration place you feel to be in this energy, the Ascension energy? It's definitely a node, if you want to call it that. And it's it's transforming. It's transforming right now. I've been here for three years and I've watched it just level up to a, a more crystalline conductor. So quite beautiful. And so tell people what's coming up for you, not personally, but your organization, what's happening and how they get in touch with you. Oh, just quickly go to ascensionpath.com, sign up for the light letter and and uh, you'll find out everything that we have going on. There's all kinds of new things uh, presenting for next year. Um, September Equinox next year is our big event in Sedona. Um, yeah, it's We do a lot, Sunday unity meditations, all of that, but go and sign up for the light letter and I'll, I'll write you all about it. Thank you. Thanks so much for having this conversation. I've always wanted to have a conversation with you. It was beautiful. I know I loved yeah, it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.